my turbo setup, I, uh, my turbo uh, choice has been uh, the Borgwana SXE series 257, 57mm combined with TL uh, exhaust housings. These don't fit on the turbochargers. These are Garrett GT35 housings. To make them fit on the turbocharger, we have to make an adapter plate and do some machining uh, inside the housing. So everything will be lined up and uh, correct for the turbine wheel. This will be a custom setup. The manifolds are made in-house by myself. The collectors are custom made by Alma Racing in Finland. Really nice guy who does all custom work if you want him to. If he doesn't have what you need on program, he will make a program for you. So we had them make a custom 3 to 1 collector that we directly adapt to the manifold. There will be highest possible flow. And one on each turbo and one for the wastegate. Wastegates are 50 millimeter ones from Aeroflow Performance. We have used them uh, on our previous uh, setup had no issues, everything worked fine for years. We will use them on my new setup as well, only bigger. Crankshaft is a uh, Calais Compstar crankshaft. We have uh, mounted up a 60 minus 2 wheel. We have bought the center counterweight one balanced it at the uh, Vidma engines. Before balancing, Vidma uh, engine has uh, checked the crankshaft that it's running straight. If it's not straight, it's not necessary to balance it because you have to make it straight first. This was in perfect uh, shape when we received it and uh, have now been uh, balanced. They have um, put in some uh, heavy metal several places to match the weight on the pistons and the cone rods. The heads is Mass Motorsports 295 Cathedral Ports the most beautiful subheads I've ever seen. We've checked all guides and uh, all seats. Vidma and Jan has gone through everything. Everything was in perfect shape. They have machined in these O-ring grooves. So since we will run an O-ring uh, setup with a copper gasket, so we will mount up stainless wire in the heads that will be pushed into the copper gasket. Vidma and Jan has custom made guides to the heads against the block, so the heads will be in perfect lineup for the stainless wire to line up against the receiver groove in the block. There are so tight tolerances on everything. Vidma and Jen have made special guides to line it up as perfect as possible. Titanium valves, intake valves, there are big valves on these heads, so we need to keep the weight down. We will run this engine to between 8 and 8.5 thousand RPM, so we need to keep the weight on the valves down. Mountain push rods have printed out a 3D print of the rocker arm setup, so before they ship all parts, we can measure out the push rod length when the heads are on the block. Johnson lifters, we have uh, purchased the uh, axle oiling Johnson lifters, short travel, axle oiling, they have been uh, laying around in oil for a couple of weeks, I've had this box in my car, been driving around and uh, all the air will get out of the lifter, just a small tip a friend of mine gave me. It's been laying in oil for weeks, been having this box in the car and 
you will have movement in the oil and more air will get out of the lifter. DSS racing pistons. We've grinded down all sharp edges. Everything has been grinded and filed. All sharp edges and stress risers is gone. So the piston is as smooth as possible. We don't want detonation happening due to sharp edges that where heat can concentrate itself and build up. I beam rods, they have been rated from Oliver to handle 2000 horsepower. Really nice piece. All ARP bolts on the rods, on the block, on the crankcase has been stretched up by Vidma engines. They have uh, the correct stretching tool to measure that the bolts are stretched to spec and controlled the roundness, the clearances, and everything have, has been gone through by them. Uh, so I'm confident that everything is uh, within spec to the RPMs, to the horsepower, to the weight of oil that we want to use. I'm going to run big clearance. I have good uh, experience with big uh, clearances due to high RPMs, big horsepower, and uh, I like to run a uh, heavy weight oil, uh, a 50 or 60 weight oil uh, on, on my setups. run a 10W60 weight oil on uh, this uh, setup, so the clearances has to be adapted for that oil. The intercooler setup will be a chart cooler, a water cool setup from Aeroflow Performance. I ordered the biggest one I could find in their list, and they also had a water tank suited for, the, for running ice in the water. Finished with a baffle, so you would not have ice into the water pump when uh, circulating. Really nice uh, tank, uh, nice intercooler big inlets and outlets, four and a half inch in and out. It's rated from ILFO performance up to 3000 horsepower. So it won't be much restriction for my setup. Hopefully. All parts are ready for assemble. We not just need to double check everything. First thing I will uh, have to do before torquing up the crank shaft is to check the truss bearing uh, clearance. It's important that the truss bearing clearance is not too tight, so it's not uncommon that we need to grind off to make the clearance uh, adapted as it's as it should. So this has to be checked. Everywhere in the block has been deeper grinded down little sharp edges everywhere on the block has been rounded off, grinded down with uh, deeper, so we won't have any stress anywhere in the block. The block is finished board, finished honed, everything's measured out, clearances are perfect, rings are grinded, all piston ring clearance are uh, adapted to each cylinder. It's not uncommon that you need to grind the gap on the rings. The gap on piston rings has to be fitted for its uh, use, for, for the amount of heat, uh, cylinder pressure and uh, RPMs that it will see. If the rings expand so much that the ends will hit, you can destroy your piston and cylinder walls and it will be catastrophic for the engine if this happens. This is one of thousand things that takes a lot of time when building serious horsepower engine.
on my last setup, I had a theory that I tested out. I grinded in small grooves on the crankshaft on my last setup to more efficient have oil transferred through around the truss bearing. This is important to have on the back side of the truss bearing where the converter is pressing against. The problem with LS engines is they have a weak truss bearing. They need all the support they can have. My theory around this uh, modification is when the crank will be pressed against the truss bearing, oil will get locked into the groove. It will function as a hydraulic damper, so the crank will never hit the bearing. And when it goes uh, past the groove on the truss bearing, oil will be changed out and transferred around the truss bearing. This was my theory. When I took the old engine apart, the bearing and the crankshaft looked like brand new. It has never been touching. We run eight and a half thousand RPMs. We had 39 pounds of boost. All internals looked perfect. Bearings, crankshaft, everything. So if the modification has helped, well, it hasn't been doing any damage. So we will take this experience onto this engine and uh, I can see that it will hurt. I would like to talk for hours about this build, but uh, since the car is not here, uh, it's, it's only Raymond that's uh, polishing parts. And uh, yeah, you know, the boring stuff. We want to see the race car stuff. Agree? More power. More power! <laughs> How about now? How about now? <laughs>